All right. Um, my name's Lars. I work for the Spinnaker team at Google. I've been there for uh, about two years now, uh, since a little before it was open sourced. Uh, and uh, I'd like to walk you through this tool I've been working on called Halyard. By a quick show of hands, who's tried using Halyard? Or maybe who hasn't tried using Halyard? Uh, but who hasn't tried using Halyard and is running a Spinnaker installation? All right. We'll talk to you later. It's be... <laughs> or if, you, if you're not convinced to use it, then uh, don't talk to me. But, uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, since Spinnaker was open sourced, uh, we um, started to realize that Spinnaker is a difficult tool to um, administer for a number of reasons. Uh, so there's a couple of problems, and you can really break them up into two categories. Uh, first one is, uh, so it sounds like a tautology, but Spinnaker does require a lot of Spinnaker-specific knowledge. You can spend a lot of time learning how to uh, configure all the various microservices. Uh, there are hundreds of configuration parameters that actually make sense for uh, a user to touch and change as they figure out how they want to run Spinnaker. And uh, keeping all that documented and up to date uh, is no easy task. Uh, and the next one, uh, we can all agree microservices are generally hard to manage. Uh, Spinnaker is made up of nine or ten of them, depending on how you deploy it. Um, if uh, you now require your ops team to also manage uh, whatever they're already running and then Spinnaker on top of that, uh, it's quite a bit to ask them, especially when there's no good paved path for how to uh, manage the deployment of Spinnaker. Uh, so uh, to solve these problems, um, we said uh, a lot of the Spinnaker specific knowledge is something that we can codify. It's something that uh, we can write up contracts for. We can say what good uh, Spinnaker configuration looks like, what bad Spinnaker configuration looks like, and uh, as much as possible, try to guide users to the process of uh, configuring their Spinnaker installation. Uh, and two, um, Spinnaker is actually a tool that's made for managing the deployment of microservices. So in the case where you're running a distributed Spinnaker, why not try and leverage Spinnaker itself uh, to help you deploy and keep it up to date? Uh, so uh, for those of you who uh, haven't seen Spinnaker before, I have a little recording here that I'm going to walk you through. Uh, showing you, so not Spinnaker, Halyard. For those of you who haven't seen Halyard before, it makes a lot more sense. Uh, you can see, so basically it's it's a it's a CLI for the most part, or when you interact with it. Here what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to enable the Google provider. I want to interact with Google resources. Uh, the next thing I try to do is I say, all right, in the Google provider, I want to add an account. And uh, in doing so, I call it my GCE account. And I'm going to use this uh, project of mine right here. Uh, first thing Halyard does is it tries to check, like, okay, are your credentials that you supplied me with here implicitly okay? In this case, they're not. The ones that are in my environment wouldn't work. And this is something that typically you wouldn't see until Spinnaker's come up and some weird statement in the log says uh, something failed. So here it says, try to uh, supply more explicit credentials. Uh, that's what I do. I use this JSON path parameter. I supply it with a credential file. It checks to make sure the scopes are okay. And uh, the account's been added. Uh, so here I just verify that. I list the accounts. And it uh, looks like my GC account was added. So um, what it's doing here, it's uh, the first thing it does is from each service that tries to instantiate credentials for uh, Spinnaker, it actually takes that part of the code in the jar, imports it into Halyard, and actually uses that to try and instantiate your credentials. So if that succeeds, you're already on the right track. Uh, it then tries to use these to do some simple things, like maybe like listing some regions, it checks some IAM scopes, it makes sure that uh, when this thing actually runs, you, you're not going to take out some part of your production Spinnaker on accident. Uh, and then finally, because we see a lot of things go wrong when you configure Spinnaker, uh, all these things that we've seen, we try to codify and we put remediations in. Uh, I don't have a recording of this, it's a little hard to follow, but for example, um, when you configure Kubernetes, if you import your credentials in the wrong format, ones that expect gcloud to be present inside your Kubernetes cluster, uh, Spinnaker won't start up. And we know what that looks like, so when we see credentials in that format, Halyard right away says, hey, here's a command to re-download your credentials, uh, run this thing, and then everything should work for, uh, just fine. So, uh, as we... The, the biggest benefit is that you now have just one file that you're managing that describes exactly how Spinnaker should run. And uh, this file that typically lives in slash how slash config, uh, it's fully declarative. So once you've defined it once, you can use it to spin up a Spinnaker. And every time you do, and every time you reapply your deployment, uh, it'll look identical. So uh, you can very easily have uh, uh, Spinnaker managed across environments. You can have um, uh, no concern that if Spinnaker goes down, that you can bring it up exactly the way it was before. 
Uh, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, all the validation that Halyard's doing uh, happens, for the most part, all the things we can catch uh, before you accidentally do break something. And this is uh, uh, probably the most, uh, or one of the more valuable parts of Spanker, because uh, a lot of the services really have no way of catching if the credentials or the configuration you supply. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways you can integrate with various services like Slack or uh, Google Cloud Platform or Kubernetes. And all these things, the service might start up okay at first, and then suddenly it starts failing health checks or it never starts up, and there's no good, uh, no good way to understand what you did wrong or uh, how to fix it. And uh, finally, depending on what cloud provider Halyard deploys Spinnaker to, uh, the credentials and the secrets are distributed by the best practice uh, security uh, tools available for that platform. Uh, so, Another big thing uh, it's good to mention is all the documentation that um, we have on the doc site, especially around how to configure Spinnaker, and there's, I think, like thousands of parameters. All these are scraped from the Halyard CLI and automatically generated every time we release um, Spinnaker and Halyard. So there's always an up-to-date uh, description of how to configure every little bit of Spinnaker uh, sitting on the Spinnaker IO doc site. And these apply to Halyard, but uh, they map pretty much directly to the uh, Spinnaker subservice config. So if you want to use that instead, you can uh, configure it like that, too. Um, so we can start to peel back the curtain and uh, look look at what it's doing. So um, the, all the uh, validation and configuration generation and the deployment of Spinnaker actually happens inside this Halyard daemon. Uh, the reason why we did it this way and not just squish it all into one CLI is uh, one, it's convenient in many cases to spin up the daemon on a remote host and then have it configure Spinnaker there and then speak to it from a CLI on a different machine. And two, we also want it to have all that same validation and configuration generation and everything uh, be fronted by a UI that doesn't exist yet. Uh, it might exist at some time. Uh, seems like some people are interested in it. If you guys are, uh, love to hear about it. Uh, and uh, the idea is that all this knowledge shouldn't be living just inside a tool that you can only interact with uh, via CLI, but uh, pretty much everything of uh, like everything noteworthy happens inside this daemon and this uh, HAL config file. Um, so uh, to talk a little bit about it, uh, there's um, a lot of the operations like deploying Spinnaker, uh, validating some of the more complicated credentials objects can take a while. So most of the communication between uh, the daemon and the, the CLI is asynchronous. So you do something, uh, it starts running, uh, and eventually it succeeds or fails. Uh, and inside the CLI, it, again, it's a very thin wrapper. All it really does is it has these uh, little operation handlers. It says, like, I want to do something. I want to say if it succeeds, do this. If it fails, do that. Uh, and then it just executes these on your behalf. So uh, easy enough to replicate with uh, your own tooling if you need to. Um, and then so from the from Dan's perspective, uh, but keep in mind that everything in here lives inside that one uh, HAL config file as a centralized declarative description of your Spinnaker deployment. Um, everything in there falls into a bunch of classes. Uh, each of these supplies some um, hooks into making it really easy to search and validate across these nodes. Uh, might sound like a lot of detail, but I'm going to describe in a minute how, how it actually does a lot of the validation. So you basically you construct these filters, and in there it's really easy to go across all your Spinnaker configuration, make sure that configuration in the eGroup service uh, will work correctly if you configure CloudDriver like this, and all these things are validated holistically. Uh, so uh, the idea basically there's like two key parts of the validation. Uh, every time you change one of these nodes inside your HAL config, uh, you want to make sure that this is validated and also val uh, validated if an edit is made to a child node, and that happens recursively. And then uh, two, every kind of validation you would do uh, happens to one specific type of node, or could be a super type of a node. So to, to make that clear, uh, say you have it's like a subset of your HAL config. You have a Google provider enabled. Uh, you have uh, some accounts. It looks very similar to your cloud driver config, and uh, that's done intentionally. Uh, and you say you have my GCE account, and in there you have um, this account.json. Uh, so. So you make an edit, you change it to new account, maybe you're rotating credentials, or you need to um, uh, uh, change your IAM scopes and you downloaded a new key. Uh, and you do so, and the very first thing you do is, uh, or how it does for you, is it checks to make sure that, well, do these credentials actually have the right scope? So it says, okay, uh, this JSON key file works. And in that case, it goes up the class hierarchy and says, hey, do top level account properties that are required for everything in CloudDriver and Roscoe, uh, do these work? So does the name match a certain pattern? Uh, do uh, scopes for fiat, uh, are they applied properly to this account? Uh, and then you 
step up and you say, uh, with this generic node validator, you make sure that fields that are uh, version specific inside Spinnaker. So if you try to enable a property in Spinnaker that wasn't available yet in a certain version or something that uh, doesn't work correctly or you can't enable for a certain version of Spinnaker uh, are actually being used correctly. And you go up and you validate the Google provider, you validate uh, any sort of bakery edits you may make, I may have made by editing this account. Um, and again, you pass the node validator. And uh, this basically keeps on going until you've walked all the way up to the top of your how config and make sure that anything possibly affected by this edit uh, will still work after you redeploy Spinnaker. Um, so now that Halyard's done all the heavy lifting of making sure that everything that you've configured will look OK, uh, it's, it's time to generate all of that configuration inside of Spinnaker. And this is just a small subset of the files on a typical deployment how you'll generate in 50 to 100 files. Uh, and that's a pain to manage yourself, which is why it's really nice to have a tool that does all this uh, in one spot for you. So uh, to break down the process a little bit, uh, a big part of what we did for Spinnaker uh, with, with the help of the community is uh, try to come up with these like version top level releases of Spinnaker. So previously you were installing various subservices ad hoc. Uh, there's no guarantee they were validated at those respective versions. Um, we now store all those versions at which we validate and inside a global bucket. And then when you go uh, to actually deploy one of these, the first thing Halyard does is check like, okay, so for this version of Spinnaker, how do I generate its configuration? Uh, so once you grab that, you grab a sort of like a, a base configuration file for every single one of the subservices. And these are uh, determined when you build that subservice at that version, you take whatever's checked in for that version's config and then upload it to this uh, top level health config bucket. Uh, so uh, there's some handy things in here that happen. So for example, uh, recently in a spring boot upgrade for gate, uh, I think this happened earlier uh, this week. Um, the way you configure authentication has changed. And you can either read the change log very meticulously or, and go through the commit stream and see how do you correctly configure gate now, or you can have Halyard automatically generate uh, the authentication profile for you. Because uh, if, uh, if you don't do that, then uh, um, OAuth breaks, for example. Uh, and then finally, there, uh, uh, Halyard needs to take into account some um, uh, environment specific details. So things like uh, if you're running on Kubernetes, your endpoints look one way. If uh, you've, I guess this doesn't really make sense, but if you've configured TLS on localhost, uh, that'll look different. Or if you're running uh, Spinnaker in a distributed environment where you run a console, the endpoints look different. It plugs all that in for you. Uh, there's a couple of oddities for how configurations mounted across various platforms. Uh, if you're deploying um, uh, DEC on Kubernetes or in a Docker container, there's one way to put config in versus this is if you do it in, uh, on, a, on a local machine. And then there's a bunch of different ways you supply environment variables, and this list uh, goes on and on. But uh, at the end, it's, an, it's a kind of an unfortunate side effect is that you need to tell Spinnaker uh, where it's going to run for it to be configured correctly. Uh, and then finally, uh, no fancy diagram here, something interesting going on. But if any of the configuration that you have maybe for a prior installation of Spinnaker or something that you've handcrafted or isn't supported inside of Halyard, you can just supply that directly to Halyard, and it uses that in place of uh, what it generates for that service. Uh, so uh, this is the maybe the more interesting part. So uh, the next thing, you've generated all this configuration. And if you're deploying to a distributed environment, Halyard makes sure to leverage Spinnaker to do that for you. So. Uh, the first thing that it does is it deploys like a bootstrapping uh, instance of Spinnaker. Uh, if you've configured it correctly, and this is like the smallest bit of Spinnaker you need enabled uh, to, to actually run pipelines. So you have like CloudDriver, the cloud provider integration endpoint, Orca, the orchestration engine, uh, and then Redis to act as a storage source for both Orca and CloudDriver. And uh, once that's up and running in that host environment, Halyard can start issuing commands to that the same way uh, a user would through the deck UI. So, uh, once that's running, uh, it creates custom pipelines for each of these. And again, it's important to note that the versions of each of the subcomponents that are installed uh, match those validated versions that, uh, with our integration tests, we've said, like, this squad driver and this gate work together, so it's okay to deploy uh, this version of Spinnaker, these versions of these subservices. Um, so uh, it's important to note, if you're familiar with Spinnaker, there's like this clone operation where if you supply, if you make a change to like a server group, for example, and uh, you then issue a clone, that change is carried over. So in 
uh, in Halyard, when you make a change to the way your Spinnaker is configured, maybe you want to change uh, some port that something runs on, or you make a change to uh, a service that's backed by, or you, you change a network policy to change some security, uh, whatnot, and you actually go to deploy again with Halyard, uh, everything's left intact that you've changed, except for uh, things like uh, which container image you're running. Uh, so uh, the idea is that uh, you deploy Spinnaker, you make any edits you need for your environment, and those are kept in place forever. Uh, so and there's like some special cases. If you're not using Halyard and you don't want to use Halyard, uh, these slides will be online. This is probably important. So for one, if you're running Orca with V3 pipelines, you have to explicitly tell it when to drain work. Um, uh, it's important to note because if you just shut it down, uh, there's a good chance that some of the work that's ongoing, some of the stages, um, won't be drained properly. This happens pretty quickly. It takes maybe a couple seconds each time you do it. But it's important to note that uh, when you are running Orca, you do have to tell it to shut down. If you aren't running V3 pipelines yet, or if you have a mix of the two, you also have to explicitly disable it and then uh, wait for all the executions on every particular uh, instance to stop running. And then it can safely be, um, be killed off. <clears throat> and then finally, um, Brosco also has some special update semantics. Uh, for various reasons, it's really difficult for uh, nodes in Roscoe to exchange uh, packer workloads. So once you uh, basically kick off uh, a packer build, it's really difficult to take that and move it to another instance. So Roscoe is very stateful. You can't uh, safely shut down Roscoe. I forgot to mention, uh, you don't want to restart Redis. So how you want to do that, and uh, that stays up and running for you. Uh, so if say something went wrong, like you, you roll out a new version of uh, Spinnaker, maybe you misconfigured something that wasn't caught by Halyard, or you realize something in that version of Spinnaker isn't right and you want to roll back, uh, Halyard makes it really easy for you as well. Uh, when it deploys with a red black all those versions of uh, those uh, subservices of Spinnaker, it leaves around an old copy with a uh, at scale down to size zero. So basically, <clears throat> uh, you can very quickly, like within minutes, have your prior version of Spinnaker up and running again. What's up? Uh, I was uh, wondering about the uh, last gate upgrade. We had to flush with this to, uh, to uh, make it work. Uh, that's a good point. It's something Halyard uh, should do, but doesn't do. Okay. I'll file a bug. That's, that's a good point. Uh, Halyard, it's, a, it's actually a good point. There are flags that you can configure for it to, uh, it doesn't do it automatically because it didn't know to this time, but you can say, like, I want to flush all my infrastructure caches when I update CloudDriver because maybe some schema change happens, or maybe you've deleted accounts that for whatever reason are persistent in Redis. Uh, Halyard can safely go in and just delete those keys relevant to that change to make sure that you don't, like, sometimes you'll make a change in CloudDriver, redeploy it, and you'll see for whatever reason, you still have accounts sitting in the UI that really don't exist anymore just because CloudDriver can't pick up on the fact that you deleted the account. And uh, Halyard makes that easy for you to delete. Uh, so uh, again, rollback pipelines are generated and specific to each subservice with whatever weird intricacies they have. Uh, another benefit here is Halyard tries to make it easier to debug. So for example, I can either connect to one of the load balancers or to one of the specific instances. Here I connect to a, a gate load balancer, and I say, all right, once the connection's open, I'm going to try and uh, grab some, um, what's it called, some uh, some endpoint information. And I know that the connection's open uh, with one command. This, this works across all platforms. You can say, uh, but for example, show me what's going on inside of Redis. Uh, and uh, basically spits everything out for you. And Talyard sets it up like this to make it easy to figure out if you are doing something fancy with your spending your configuration uh, to see what's going on. Uh, also, across all the various platforms, it makes sure that you can very easily collect logs from uh, what's been deployed uh, inside your cluster. So you say, like, I want to get logs from every single instance of CloudDriver that's running right now. Uh, Talyard goes ahead and says, give me all your cloud drivers and fetch my logs and put them in a known place. And not very interesting, but we can look at the contents. And there you have it. Um, other things, uh, configuring monitoring inside of Spinnaker can sometimes be painful. Uh, you have to attach a sidecar to every single service that you're running. Uh, this could be a, uh, we have a pre-built sidecar uh, called Spinnaker Monitoring. Uh, configuring it's not easy. Each 
each sidecar needs special configuration depending on what service it's talking to. It's all documented, but again, it's just much easier to say, like, I want to enable stack driver monitoring, have Halyard set up everything that needs to be set up, and then run apply this deployment and to make sure that everything comes up again, but now with this sidecar attached and spitting out logs to dashboards in the relevant system that you care about. Uh, and then uh, last thing, this isn't implemented, but it should be soon. Uh, there's easier scaling of Spinnaker too. Like there's creative ways to split out the subservices by uh, their, their um, uh, like what they need to do. Like for example, you can have one instance of CloudDriver that only serves uh, cached information that's serviced by gate. So anytime you have a request to the UI or from Orca, uh, it comes through and gate comes back and says, uh, I'm only gonna talk to the cloud driver that has cached info. And then you can have one cloud driver, which maybe is doing a ton of heavy lifting uh, that does um, uh, all the caching of all the resources, which can be quite slow. And you can scale that however you want to, and it doesn't have to worry about taking requests from worker or gate. And Halyard can pretty much set this up for you um, automatically. Um, so key takeaways here really are that uh, the HAL config presents itself as like a centralized place where all your configuration for Spinnaker lives. Every time you make a change to that and you reapply it, that change will look the same every time you run it again. Uh, and uh, this comes with like documentation about how to write this yourself. Uh, it comes with uh, tooling to make sure that if you make an error, it'll try to make it easy for you to figure out how to fix that. Uh, and then the hard parts of deploying Spanker, like managing various life cycles, making sure that it's set up with monitoring, you can get the logs out easily. Uh, these are all configured on your behalf. Um, any questions? Um, what's it look like to migrate from an existing Spinnaker installation? Like we have an old Spinnaker installation long before Halyard came out. Yeah, that's a very good question. So it's, um, as you, if you've, Configured Spinnaker by hand, you'll see there's a, like a million ways you can configure it. There's unfortunately no one size fits all migration pattern, but odds are you probably have a couple accounts. You probably may have maybe monitoring, maybe have some webhooks configured. All of this has a corresponding command in the documentation. You could probably within 10, 20 commands and with a little bit of help text, get to the point where you were before, but now managed by Halyard and at a versioned uh, release number. So just do a fresh fresh run with higher. Make sure you point at the same uh, GCS, S3, whatever bucket. And if you have the same cloud driver accounts, all that information carries over. So everything's already deployed in that environment. You already have all your pipelines and applications living in a bucket. If you redeploy Spinnaker pointing at those same things, you get pretty much the same exact uh, Spinnaker running. Would there be risks of running a higher generated Spinnaker and our old Spinnaker pointing at the same buckets and resources? Uh, as long as the they're not both trying to write to the bucket, at the same time it should be okay. And there shouldn't be, as far as I can think, any risk of trying to deploy the same resources or same environments at the same time. But um, uh, as long as one of them's reading and one of them's writing, there's no problem. Cool, thank you. Are you running uh, Halyard locally to versions? Uh, there's a bunch of ways you can do this. If you want, we can talk through how to automate the process of, like, have a CI system that uses Halyard to deploy Spinnaker. Um, so easiest thing to do as far as what the docs will guide you through is to, in one way or another, spin up a VM uh, and then run Halyard inside of that and then keep that around as, like, a bastion host. That's kind of clunky. You don't necessarily have to do that. So Halyard has this command. It's called uh, pal backup create. It'll take everything, uh, all the profiles that you supply Halyard with, that you override your config with, all the credentials that you supply, and, uh, of course, the Hal config file, and it tars it up and removes any sort of uh, leading... Uh, paths relative to where it's been installed and uh, puts it in a, a tarball and you can do whatever you want with that. If you unpack it with like the, the inverse command, uh, that tarball expands back into a full uh, halyard um, uh, configuration. So if you have a CI system where maybe you uh, automate a change to, to to your HAL config, you can after that package it up, uh, put it in S3 or whatever, and then when you need to uh, pull it back down and then maybe in an ephemeral container, take that deploy spinnaker, have that ephemeral container shut down, and then exactly what's stored in S3 corresponds to that spinnaker that's running. What did you say? Is there a recipe for that? Uh, no, I'll, I'll write up the docs. It's, it's not a, it's uh, not super straightforward, but it's not a, not a hard thing to do either. Is there thoughts about actually maybe automating that process? Uh, the pro uh, which process? The, uh, the like the, the back creating the backup. Yeah. Um, like what, where would you want it automated? Like inside like a Jenkins or a drone? No, no, no. Um, like automating the storage, like pointing 
instead of your local mm. .tl slash config, you, you know, point it as three or you point it some other. Uh, I'm worried about uh, credential storage in one of these systems. It, it could be done if you correctly set up KMS, like your cloud KMS, and then Calyrid has the keys to correctly encrypt and decrypt your secrets. Um, that's an open work item. Actually, I have a bug open for that. Uh, it's a little bit of work, but it, it would be nice because then basically everything lives in the cloud, and then Halyard makes changes to something in a version bucket. Um, no, that's a good point. And you, you would allude to my next question, which is going to be, I noticed my um, passwords in free text in the in the how config, yeah, yeah, uh, they will they need to be stored. Uh, if you most password fields had a corresponding password file type of way to supply it, which is probably the better way to store it. In some places, it's going to have to be stored in plain text unless you use KMS to basically encrypt that file or encrypt your how config and then store that. Or the secrets for that. Or the secrets, yeah, there are plenty of ways to do it. Yeah. You had a question? Yeah, so. Um... I know for us, we want to start to develop our own specific code that's only relevant to our own company. Does Halyard have support for that now? <laughs> Not. So, like, do you want to extend Spinnaker and then use your custom Spinnaker and deploy that? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. want to extend something and basically be able to pull in the OSS and then pull in our own specific version. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, if you have a way to build that. Um, those versions of Spinnaker and give a way to capture that they're stored in some repository. Uh, all you have to do, so everything in Halyard, when you deploy it, revolves around this bill of materials. If you create your own bill of materials and then put it either in a bucket or on your file system or whatever, and then point to that, it'll deploy that instead. So we've done this for, um, uh, I think, someone wanted to use the containers in Quay instead of the ones in GCR and version that weren't actually released, but uh, they just created little materials that pointed at Quay, had the various versions that were sitting in Quay at the time, some, most of them were master and latest, uh, and then just deployed that instead. So as long as you can upload your artifacts, whether they're like uh, Debian packages or uh, Docker images, maybe Yum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and you have the versions for that, you can very easily tell how you just use that instead. So like in that case, would you like have your own version of that package that's just basically the uh, open source code plus your own combined together? Like, that's right, yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's a, you have to first build your own component. So you have to build it. And then you, uh, if you're building a custom component, you'll need some way to build it into like a, a Debian or a Docker image or something. Uh, there's no really no assumptions made about like uh, any scripts living in that or anything beyond what exists in the open source. So if you can build like, like CloudDrive, for example, and you, la you layer some custom code on there, or you have some uh, modular builds and you have some custom jars that you import, uh, if you can produce that and then upload it to your um, like a bin tray or whatever, uh, Halyard can just fetch those packages instead of the ones that we publish and upload to bin tray. So one uh, of those builds have dependency to some YAML. For configuration. How how you know where the source the configuration from? Uh, is this YAML that you changed dynamically at runtime or stuff that you uh, deployment time? Uh, deployment time. So, uh, what's an example of a YAML file? If it's something that Halyard supports already, uh, or any sort of custom file. Most custom files, you basically put there's a special folder in your how config uh, folder on your local machine. Uh, it takes that per component uploads it to a given directory, and then uh, deploys it like that, basically. You're referring to all of the local YAML file. Yep, there's, per, there's a, exactly. So the slide where I didn't have any pictures. Actually, it's no point pulling up, there's no pictures. But the, uh, the idea is you you put like Cloud Driver local in this how profiles directory. Uh, when it comes time to deploy, how your checks to see if you have any like overrides for spring sitting in there. And it says like, okay, well, uh, odds are you want to uh, configure something that's not supported in Halyard, or you have some sort of changes that are relevant exactly only to your uh, custom build. And those are then put in the right spot and Cloud Driver can pick those up. And we have people migrating from um, non Halyard managed Spinnakers to Halyard managed Spinnakers by just taking their Cloud Driver file and literally taking that and not having Halyard generate anything at all. That works too. What's the underlying infrastructure this thing can point on to? Um, uh, so if you are running an Ubuntu 14.04 VM, this is the, the constraint exists because the various Spinnaker subcomponents expect that they're running on Ubuntu 14.04. I think they support 16.04 now too. So if you have either of those, um, Spinnaker 
uh, can be deployed, how you can be deployed on that, and you can pull down the packages and then run um, uh, Spinnaker on top of that. Uh, or if you're running Kubernetes, it can be deployed to a Kubernetes cluster. Or if you have a Google uh, a compute engine uh, project, there's an alpha release uh, or an alpha path where you can actually have Spinnaker set up a fully distributed multi VM console vault, everything, bells and whistles, Spinnaker too. Uh, AWS support doesn't exist. If someone wants to write it, uh, they're welcome to. I'm not going to. That's, uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm a little biased, though. It's uh, a. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dimitri. You just mentioned uh, uh, Vault, which is going to be my question. Have you had anyone come to you for feature requests to store secrets in Vault as opposed to, I assume the KMS you were mentioning was a Google Cloud Management, Key Management thing? Or the Amazon equivalent. Yeah, I'm familiar with the Amazon equivalent, but not familiar with the Google one. But like, aside from those two targets, Vault is another pretty commonly deployed secret store. So I was wondering whether. Yeah, my my, uh, my thinking was that I would implement it for Google, have an API inside of Halyard that basically says, here's a way to encrypt something and upload it. You can do that in Vault. Vault, I think, has a KMS solution and a way to store secrets. So you can do pretty much do both. And uh, if you implement the API, I, I might even do that myself. Uh, you'll be able to store all your Vault config credentials and everything inside a Vault instead of keeping them in a bucket or on your local machine. Awesome, thanks. Yep. So I, I completely get the reason why you focus more on Google and Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. uh, but since now it seems like the Spinnaker consortium as a whole has decided to go Halyard, that's how all the docs are written. Is there a roadmap for other cloud? Are you just waiting for, like, for other cloud providers? Or is this something that you're just waiting for someone to volunteer for? Because uh, That's a good question. So um, the uh, it's interesting, right? So the, the thing is, we there's very few people running Spinnaker at a scale where it's absolutely necessary that you actually run a distributed installation. If you want to run on ECS and support really hefty workloads, you can do that on just a big VM and have Halyard pull down the packages and run it there. And you'll get really far with that alone. But if you're like Netflix scale and you have tens of thousands of VMs, you're going to need more than that. And I think when a customer comes along with that kind of uh, uh, constraint, it's, it's a different problem. But so far, there's like a building out the support for uh, ECS, EC2 uh, to, to deploy Spinnaker to those environments. Uh, it doesn't really make sense until it's like if there's a dire need to do so. Could you use Halyard purely for config generation? Like if we already like our distributed setup for Spinnaker, but we wanted to manage config so that updates don't break us as bad. Can you do that? Yeah, absolutely. It is, it's a, not a paved road path, but all the config that Halyard generates lives inside. It's a how it's, it's on the docs, but it's how uh, deployment name and then staging and everything staged in there. Uh, the, the way the files map into Spinnaker is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is documented as well, but uh, you can pretty much create a HAL config, run um, HAL deploy apply, or HAL, there's another one. It creates all the config for you, and it sits in that folder, and you can use that there. Cool. So um, on the docs, it has for installing Halyard itself, um, Ubuntu, and then the Docker image. I noticed in the Git repo that there's a Mac OS. You're really up to date. That was like uh, last Friday. That's really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> also, it shouldn't work, because I um, Did you just copy the? No, I copied and changed something, and then wanted to try. I, I, this is my first Mac ever, so it's going to be <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to try and figure out how to make it work. But uh, that, that's my uh, that's my. It just, works. <laughs> it just works. I know it's supposed to just work. I don't know what's going wrong, but no, it's. Uh, um, okay, so those are coming. So don't uh, don't depend on that. Yeah, there's um a, something that I have outdated for Debian eight nine. Uh, Ubuntu 14.04 and 1604. There's an alternate installation path that uh, uses instead of uh, Debian, it uses just like a jar file and uh, like a wrapper script. So I mean that's not helpful in your case, but that's pretty much how the Mac Mac one's going to work. Uh, to kind of piggyback off the question, is there any? Maybe there is support for this already. I missed it, but is there any thought around if I want to add a Kubernetes account? Rather than redeploying Spinnaker all over again after I do the how uh, deploy apply, just bouncing cloud driver or something like that. Yeah, uh, there's a command for that. So if you supply only the services you want to redeploy, uh, you just say like how deploy apply service names cloud driver. It'll do that for you. Cool. Uh, Halyard's not smart enough yet, or I don't know if it will be, to determine which services to bounce. Sometimes there's like weird hidden dependent changes that aren't clear, and I didn't want to introduce weird scenarios where stuff breaks for no good reason. So uh, the default is 
redeploys all the spanger. It doesn't in parallel using Orca's execution engine, so it should always be equally fast. But uh, and it's all red black, so you can very safely keep running Spinnaker while you redeploy it, and it transfers work from one node to the other. Uh, but uh, yeah, I completely get it. If you only want to redeploy Cloud Driver, you can do that very easily. Uh, not to be a dead horse on the uh, different cloud providers thing, but you, you're talking about you know when the time might be. I, I would suggest that this might be the time uh, because I know that my organization won't start using Halyard until we can use it, you know, in, in our environment. And we also have a mandate to that everything we do this point going forward is cloud agnostic. So any tool that is going to support Spinnaker, which is also cloud agnostic, probably should be. Uh, well, the stubs are all there. If anyone's interested, uh, I'm happy to guide them. So. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Very welcome. <laughs> I mean, you want us to use it, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Any other questions? I guess we can end early. Cool. Thanks for coming.